This is the doctor bringing you a playthrough commentary of a game called FTL. It's a, it's not that new of a game. It came out uh, last year, but I discovered it just recently, and I thought is an excellent, excellent game. So, I decided to do uh, some commentaries on this. I've played this game quite a bit now, so I have some experience with this. For this initial commentary, I will focus on doing a basic playthrough with the default starting ship, the Kestro Cruiser, uh, and try to give some pointers and suggestions and tips and whatnot for newer players. So this initial ship, uh, the Kestro Cruiser, is... Uh, it doesn't have any particular features. In fact, it's in many ways an average ship. The most notable features about this ship is that it has two excellent weapons. It starts with Artemis missiles, which is one of the best missile launchers, I think, at least early on. And it starts with a burst laser Mark II, which is actually my favorite weapon. Uh, I think this particular weapon has the best uh, firepower per power ratio of almost any other weapon in the game. So I really like this burst laser mark too. It also starts with three human crew members. Humans are pretty average and they don't do anything special. Uh, but, you know, you take what you can get. But for this playthrough, I will be naming my ship something else. I th Let us name this the Galactica. And we, of course, will have Admiral William Adama at the helm. Followed by his second in command, Saul Tai. And last but not least, there are so many other characters I could choose from, but uh, let's let's have some gender balance here. I mean, Rosalind is actually my favorite uh, female character on the show, but she's not really a combat pilot, so let's go with Gareth Drace. So, yes, let us... Uh, begin. I will be playing on normal. Uh, the game is actually fairly challenging. First time players might want to do easy mode, but I play this game enough, so let's get started on normal. So, the purpose of this game, which is a roguelike game, is you have to journey with your ship across many sectors, gathering resources and whatnot along the way, and then you have to make it to the final sector and defeat the final boss. It is not uh, a trivial task. You're not guaranteed victory every single time, especially if you don't play very carefully. Uh, so, first thing you notice about the ship, pretty much you always want someone at the helm. We'll leave a diamond there. Then, depending on the situation, weapons uh, are a good idea to man, especially on this ship. We'll send Brace there. And then either shields or engines, uh, depending on the situation. So, uh, so anyway, this is the first sector. Uh, the initial starting sector is always going to be a civilian sector. There are all sorts of different types of sectors in the game. Uh, generally, the more dangerous sounding sectors, I think, have more hostile encounters, while the friendlier sectors have uh, fewer hostile encounters and more uh, stores and I think beneficial events too. Uh, it is a powerful ship. What do I want to show? So, one thing I like to do is to enable the show beacon paths on hover. Number two, that's really helpful since you can then plan out your jumps very carefully. Uh, by seeing what beacons connect to what beacon. So your ship is here and uh, each beacon is a node uh, that you can jump to uh, if you're faster than light travel and you want to just explore around the game as much as possible. So right now I actually have two paths. I can travel along the nebula or I can travel along the non-nebula path. I actually like to travel along nebula paths. It's not always recommended. It can be very dangerous since you're, you can run into ion storm, but the advantage of traveling along a nebula is that uh, the rebel fleet will pursue you slower. So you have a limited amount of time to get from here to the exit for each sector. And as uh, you jump from location to location, the 
enemy, the rebel fleet will start taking over the map, and if you jump to any of the uh, beacons taken over by the rebels, it's really bad. But, you know, I think the best way to illustrate this is just to begin, so I will be taking the nebula path since potentially it allows me to get more rewards. Let's see how this goes. So, this particular jump yielded nothing. And nebulas also have a higher than average chance of giving nothing. So here, you see, is in the middle of a plasma storm. I can search for a wreckage for survivors' equipment or avoid the risk to jump away unscathed. For the purposes of this playthrough, so normally I would search. If you search the wreckage for survivors' equipment, your ship, uh, I think there's a possibility of losing a crew member. If you avoid the risk, of course, there is no risk. So for the purposes of this playthrough, I will just avoid the risk. There. Another plasma storm. On this plasma storm, there is a rebel scout ship. Okay. So, as you can see, the problem with plasma storms is power is extraordinarily low. They only have a missile launcher available. Okay. Yes, that'll do. This is, they have an Artemis missile launcher, it does a decent amount of damage, but... Ah. I probably should have taken out their weapon system first. Alright, that works. So, uh, with your weapons, you can target specific parts of the ship. Generally, it's a good idea to target the shields or the weapons first. And you can shift power around. Uh, engines help you give a bay chance. 15% for instance. And I've taken out both of their system. Now we can give power to life support. So I don't die. Whoops, they brought some of their weapons back online. Back to the shields. That's a basic laser, Mark 1. They offer to surrender, and this is actually an extraordinarily good deal. Six missiles. I need a lot of missiles for my ship, so I will actually take this deal. Uh, excellent. So let's keep jumping. Actually. We can hit to this nebula a little later. Let's try to hit around uh, outside the nebula for a little while here. You come across a rebel automatic scout ship pursuing a civilian ship. Weapons engaged. I will aid the civilian ship. It's almost always a good idea to do so. Let's arm both of my weapon systems. He's going to be able to get his missile off first, but. I may not need to use a missile for this. Let's see how this goes. Oh, the missile missed. Excellent. I didn't take out their missile launcher, and I want to take it out. Ah, oh, but my missile missed too. That's annoying. Let's send Ty to go repair that. Wow. Man, that ship is dodging like crazy. Okay, I probably should have taken out the helm earlier, but I had no way of anticipating how much that ship dodges. The rest should be fairly trivial. Deal with with the weapon system offline. We'll take out the helm since the ship loves dodging. And we'll finish it off. They brought their missile launcher back online. So these are hull breaches. As you can see, it causes lack of oxygen uh, in the room affected. It can be a serious problem. Better send Saltai to the medbay to heal up. Valkyra Thrace does some repairs. The ship breaks apart, you hasten to contact the ship. Rewards are pretty nice too. 
The civilian ship is a science vessel. They offered quite a nice reward, too. Needing lots of extra fuel. Each jump consumes a fuel uh, supply. Fuel can be consumed fairly quickly. It depends on the sort of sector you're in. For instance, in a nebula sector, even if you start with 15 fuel, for instance, you can end the sector gathering almost no extra fuel from it. So I actually like to keep a buffer of around 10 to 15 fuel at the minimum. Preferably 15, if I can spare it. Uh, let's see. So... Let's put Dama back at the helm, and we are ready to go. So those uh, battles have given me quite a bit of scrap. I like to save up to 50 scrap initially, since you can perform some upgrades of that. Scrap is basically the currency in this game, money, the jump. Let's see, this jump beacon, your jump, leaves you with nothing but empty space. This jump beacon serves no purpose other than as a connection. That's unfortunate. Uh, I don't need to hit any of these stores early on. Let's see, one, two, three, and then back to the nebula. Excellent. I like to spend the first sector, it depends, but for this ship, since you have good weapons and whatnot, I don't think it's necessary to go to the store uh, early on. Here, you come across a pirate in hop suit of an, ident of an unidentified ship. You quickly receive a transmission from the pirate. To, uh, a bribe basically to stay out. So in these cases, if you try to be a hero and attack the pirate, you can get a reward from destroying the ship. There's a reasonable chance that this unidentified ship will also give you a reward. So I will attack the pirate. Their bribe isn't very generous anyway. Sometimes they make their offers more generous. This ship has a drone and a missile launcher. Hmm. Let's take out their weapon system. Let's actually power the engines. Okay. Actually, now we can go back to the shield generator with Salt High since we took out the missile. Oh, the missile launcher is back online again. Hmm. Let's make this go a little faster. We'll missile down the shields. And then. Wow, this ship is also dodging like crazy. One downside about this ship is the engine room to the shield room is very far away. Alright. That helped dodge a little. Let's see. They must have a special crew member called NG on board. That's how they're repairing so quickly. They're also dodging like crazy. So this ship is actually more annoying than I thought it would be, using up a good amount of my missile supplies, which I'll keep missing. This ship has really good engines too, that or I'm just incredibly unlucky. Let's see, let's try to finish this. You've proved sufficient match for the pirates, they are powering their FTL to jump away. I don't think so. Alright, destroying that ship only gave me some scrap, no missiles or fuel unfortunately. Upon closer inspection you realize the ship under attack was a rebel scout, it's too damaged to put up much of a fight. So actually, if I use the leverage to, uh, you gain by saving their lives to continue them to the later pursuing fleet, basically it allows me a better chance of jumping around uh, and hitting some, or it gives me basically one extra jump explore this sector. I think it's usually in the later sectors this is a pretty good deal. Uh, in the first sector, not necessarily destroying the ship, just give you a nice amount of scrap, but for the purposes of this playthrough, let's just let's select option 2 so we can explore around the first sector a bit more. So then we will repair the door control system. And after this, let us continue jumping around. So Ty can go back to the shield room. Let's take a look. You can see that the rebel uh, fleet has a slowdown in its advance somewhat because of this. So let's make the first upgrade. I like to upgrade shields first. 
uh, since having extra shields can be very very helpful early on level 2 shields is probably the best option you find a source of distress call a small research station it appears a small laboratory fire got out of control and is threatening to destroy the station so if you send your crew in your shuttle to help them put out the fire of course there's a chance you could lose a crew member if you dock to try to rescue the survivors that's a reasonably good choice you could take some hull damage or you can get a survivor so option two is pretty good you pull up alongside the station and cut through the hall you're able to rescue a few survivors but many more lost one of the survivors offer to join your crew excellent i got jones he's a rock man that's a pretty it's always good to get an extra crew member early on let's make the next power upgrade so we can power the shields more efficiently and now we have level two shields excellent let's continue exploring taken quite a bit of damage actually already in the first uh, sector that's unfortunate this civilian stage state civilian space station will buy my extra drone parts but I don't really have any extra drone parts so I can't do anything here let's keep going here we have a black market weapons trader and he is spinning me a tale of the dangers of the nebulae nebula nebulae being plural nebula Latin for cloud uh, anyway bef uh, digression the sidelines just attack this black market weapon trader hmm they have a teleporter so they teleported onto my ship somewhere nebula I can't see anything uh, he's coming to the weapon room and he's got a rock man uh, let's keep this guy on the engines we'll send Saltai from the shields because this ship only has basic laser mark 1. I actually don't need level 2 shields. So, max power to engines to help with that evade chance. Hmm. Let's see if we can avoid using an Artemis missile. Yes, she took out everything. Let us now repair the oxygen room. Next, we will concentrate fire and destroy their shield generator. Oh, we should repair the oxygen, what am I doing? We'll send all tied to help out with that too. If you abandon rep a repair early, you have to start over from the same bar, so please don't kill us, we'll give you everything we have. That's a really good deal, four fuel, five missiles. Scrap is low, but that's a lot of missiles and fuel, so I will accept their offer. Uh, so in general, in the first few sectors, if the offer is sufficiently favorable, and especially if I need resources like missile or fuel, I will usually accept the offer. If you don't accept the offer, you usually get a higher amount of scrap. And sometimes that can be good. For instance, if they offer me six drone parts, well... I don't have any drones, so I probably would have rejected that offer. Just gone for the extra scrap. Let's see, let's keep going. Let's see, the nearby planet shows signs of habitation and great beauty. A rudimentary automated planetary defense system is looping its message into space. Warning, quarantine level 5 in effect. Well, this basically means nothing happens here. I wonder, sometimes you can get a special event uh, or a special option if you have s uh, something, either a weapon system or some sort of system on your ship or a special crew member. I wonder if you upgrade your med bay enough, you might like be able to do something about that event. Hmm, I don't know. Alright, here we jump into... This beacon has been placed too close to a super giant class M star. The ship will gradually overheat until you can get out of here or die. That's that's lovely. But yes, these sun beacons are very dangerous. This ship has a beam weapon and a heavy laser. To deal with this, we should divert all power to the engines. I mean to the shield generator. And actually we might want to divert a bit of power to the engines too, but not yet, we don't need to. Let's see, what should I take out? What kind of beam is that? Is that a... That's not a Hellbrid beam. 
think that's a hull beam or something. I don't think it can penetrate level 1 shields, so I'm not going to worry about it. Let's take down their shield generator. Solar flare imminent. Right, this is where it gets dangerous, potentially. The more shields you have, the better the chance of uh, reducing damage and reducing the amount of fire you take. So, you can vent your ship to space. There are these doors that are open to space, and if you see the red... Uh, it's not a cross hatch pattern, but basically the deep red rooms with a diagonal stripe pattern like this. That means those rooms are out of oxygen. In fact, you can turn off the oxygen to uh, help with that even more. Rockmen are immune to fire, so that's one great thing about them. Otherwise, all the other uh, type of aliens and humans will take damaging fire, which is really bad. Uh, so, uh, that guy put out the fire very efficiently, plus I vented some of the fire out into space. All good stuff. Another solar flare. Let's see how this goes. This time it hits the med bay. Hmm. Best to repair that. And we can turn on the... Med Bay to heal our people. The ship explodes, leaving behind a substantial collection of useful scrap material. Med Bay looks like is going to get taken out, unfortunately. I do not want to hang around here, if at all possible. Let's see, how many jumps do I have? Let's jump here next. Into an asteroid field. Pirate ship was lying wait inside this asteroid field. Immediately moves to attack. This ship has a pike beam, which is a beam weapon, and a basic laser mark 1. Okay. Uh, let's try to get this fire put out as soon as possible. And then repair the med bay as soon as possible. For this ship, let's take out their weapons first so there's no risk. Then we will take out their shield generator. The asteroid field will do the rest. Let's actually send Kara Drace to the weapons system. So, uh, having people in these uh, specific systems is logically good for it. So, for instance, having someone in the shield room makes the shields recharge faster, 10% faster. Having someone in the weapons room makes the weapons charge faster, and they can level up as uh, the crew members gain experience. Uh, they become more efficient at their jobs. Having someone in the engine room increases the evade chance. Alright, you win. So this guy's offering me quite a bit of fuel. Six fuel is a lot, uh, actually. Uh, I don't know. I'm very tempted to accept their offer. But, you know what? I'm not going to accept this particular surrender. If they offer me some missiles, I probably would take it. But, yeah. Let's just destroy them and see how that goes. It's a pretty good offer, though. Especially if I were low on fuel, I would have accepted that. I got two fuel, two missiles, fitting scrap. Not bad. Also, pretty good uh, reward. So, excellent. You can see in Hazard, is places like an asteroid field, you can't immediately jump out after you win a battle. So, uh, something to keep in mind. Let's keep going. Let's see, you arrive at a populated sector. One merchant seems to be mass broadcasting a request for a mercenary ship to aid him. Sure, I'll help. And this guy, uh, basically, he wants me to look for a ship, one of his freighters, that he's uh, basically lost. Sure, I'll accept that. So, let's see how that works out. Let's see here. Hmm. So, you can see the rebels are approaching. If you jump to anywhere within the warning signal, you have to fight a uh, rebel ship, but it's not clear. I think they'll probably hit the exit, but even if they hit the exit, uh, if I jump to this beacon, I'd be guaranteed two beacons. If I jump directly to the exit, I would only be able to explore one beacon. Uh, the danger, of course, is that I have to fight a highly powered rebel ship, but 
I think I could probably survive an encounter. Another asteroid field. You arrive in an asteroid belt to discover a rebel automated scout has been stationed here. This particular ship has two lasers and a beam weapon. Kind of dangerous. Better take out their weapon system first. Yes. And then they took out my laser. So I only took down their beam weapon. That's unfortunate. Uh, next, we'll keep firing on their weapon system. With their weapons down, no more danger. And we can destroy their shield generator, followed by the helm. Took a bit of damage from this. Uh, Unfortunately, but that's okay. Then let us heal up Carrot Race. That gave me a decent amount of rewards. So yes, it looks like uh, the rebels have hit the exit, but there is at least one more beacon I can jump to. So here, you detect a rebel automated ship nearby. It does not engage. It seems to be tr patrolling around, uh, patrolling along around a long-range sensor station. Uh, this event, if you get it early on, can be really good since it could potentially reveal the sector map, but at this point, if I attack the ship, I could still at least get some uh, rewards uh, from it. Destroying the ship, that's pretty much it. So, this particular ship looks like the weapon system is dangerous. Better Artemis, the weapons platform. Ah, dodged. I'm actually taking quite a bit of damage. This is potentially very dangerous. Alright. Hmm. Okay, we took down what I needed to take down. Ooh, there's a fire there. Let's keep firing on the weapon system to prevent that from repairing. Ah, misses. Oops, let's keep firing. Alright, then we'll take down the shields. We can actually go heal up now. And then uh, we'll destroy the ship. Unfortunately, I am down to, I think, 10 or 11 hull, uh, hull which is basically health. That's, that's not good. Could definitely use a bit of help. Let's try to jump to a uh, civilian type sector next so we can repair my damage at a store. But let's see. Oh, I only got 9 scrap from that. Okay, and you can see it reveals... Actually, I can jump to one last uh, beacon here. Okay, I'll do that. Before I have to head to the exit, this beacon has a ship. Upgraded engine some. Uh, so this is a slave trader. I will attack the slavers. This is one of my favorite early events. Since uh, they have a heavy laser plus beam drone. Plus a bomb. That bomb could hurt me, potentially. Bombs consume missiles, but... Okay, there is where the bomb is, and that looks like a small bomb. So those just do some system damage. Heavy laser and beam drone aren't too dangerous. The only event where this could actually hurt is if the bomb hits my engine room. Uh, I mean, my shield room. That could be bad. But... Let's see, took down their shields. And the bombs can miss. Uh, so bombs cannot be shot down by defense drones. I don't have one, but those shoot down missiles. Uh, otherwise, they're quite good. Uh, since they bypass shields, they bypass defense drones, but they can still be dodged. These slaves are surrendering, and they offer a slave as tribute. 
so I will accept this offer since I get a free crew member. And looks like I get an excellent crew member, Brecken here. He's an NG, NG are the engineering race in this game. They repair at double speed, but they only do half damage in combat. I really like NG uh, since whenever you need a repair, these guys are highly reliable. Let's see. Let's actually upgrade power one more time so we can power all of our systems simultaneously. Then let's head to the exit. And uh, this ship has a heavy laser. That might be a Mark II heavy laser plus a beam weapon. Either way, I don't think they can really hurt me too much. Nevertheless, so if you destroy a ship uh, in a sector the rebels have already taken over, all you get is one fuel. But I might be able to actually do this. Ah, uh, missed. Yeah, that's a heavy laser mark too. Took down part of their shields. Maybe I won't need the missiles to do it. Uh, hmm. Let's take down their weapons. Took out the beam weapon. They repaired their shields back online. Hmm, they have pretty good dodge chance. This is gonna take too long. I probably will destroy the ship at the end, but it takes too long. Let's just skip ahead. To the next sector. So I chose an NG controlled sector. Uh, this sector uh, should be friendlier, and there's a reasonable chance I can find a store so that I can do some repairs at. Let's jump to this stress beacon and see what happens. Okay, you find a number of ships fleeing from a small space station. You hail them, asking them what's wrong. They say help, we're being overrun by some sort of giant alien spiders. If you're sending the crew to help, you could, of course, kill the spiders, or you could lose one of your crew. Since I'm trying to uh, preserve my three starting crew members, I'm going to leave this alone. Otherwise, it may not be a bad idea to send someone in in this case, but... Yeah, I can't risk fighting some unknown alien on every backwater station I come across. It's time to jump. Let's see, what is over here? For once you see the Mantis. Mantis are the warrior race, and their favorite strategy is to board ships using teleporters. They can be quite dangerous. Okay, let's see, where do they go? They go to the med bay. Excellent. That is about the worst place they can go. Let's actually send Jones over. And then let's power up. So, in the med bay, since I heal and they don't, I'm guaranteed to win the battle. Just sending Jones over to get this going faster. Target down their shoe generators. A mantis do double damage, so they can be really dangerous. Oh, the shoe generators down. All right. Next, we will target down their helm to eliminate any dodge chance, and that will be that. Next volley, we'll finish them off. I try to save as many of my missiles as possible if I don't need to use them. No sense in wasting precious supplies. 16 missiles seem like a lot, but it's not a lot for just the second sector eating. The ship explodes, leaving behind a substantial collection of used material, including three fuel. Actually need fuel, so that was quite good. Let's see. In this quest sector, you arrive at the last known location of the merchant's delivery. You begin to scan for the lost ship. After a quick scan, you find a ship being chased by a pirate. This must be the missing delivery ship moving to rescue them. Alright. Mantis again. Oh, it's a Mantis ship, but it looks like their borders are a Zotan and a human. Zotan are very good. They provide one extra power, but they only have 70 shields, so they're terrible to be boarding ships with laser and a bomb. I want to take out that bomb. No sense in risking it. And we will kill the boarders easily enough. Uh, uh, Jones can go heal up. Actually both my crew members can go heal up. 
take down their shields. And then we'll take down the helm. That'll be that. I might want to upgrade. Oh, they repaired that and they brought back the bomb. So let's target down their bomb missed. The small bomb again. Those aren't too bad. Some bombs can be really nasty. Ion bombs in particular are probably the most dangerous. Uh, fire bombs and breach bombs are also pretty bad. Let's see, we destroyed this sh ship and uh, you contact the delivery ship who are grateful for your assistance. They offer you a reward for saving them. Hmm, I didn't get anything from actually destroying the pirate. That's unusual. Usually these events, when you read the text and it says there are two ships, usually you get something from both ships. Although I guess not in this case. Alright. So, let's continue to travel. I want to save my scrap in case I run into a store. In fact, because I want to find a store, let's move forward as much as possible. Let's do this. And let's see. Scans reveal a large asteroid field nearby. Short range scanners may discover useful materials while we wait for the FTL to recharge. This is an extremely risky move. If you explode the asteroid field, of course, you could take some hull damage. My hull is very low, but I'm going to take the risk and exploit the asteroid field, and it looks like it paid off for me. You happen upon an abandoned mining site. A few mining drones were left behind and could be repurposed. Most critically, I didn't take any hull damage. I got a drone part, 25 scrap, so that was actually very good. Uh, the reason why I was willing to take that risk is because I knew in these friendly sectors, like the NG control sector, there's usually two or three stores, and I thought there was a very good chance I would be able to find a store. And I was right, there were actually two stores. So let's... hmm... which, which direction should we go in? Let's go here and then to that store. Let's see... A small merchant ship message used underground federation com channels are all talking about your secret mission. Let us install a weapon to help. Good luck. Heavy laser mark 2. Very nice. Requires 3 power, which is a lot. I may not be able to use this weapon for a while, but fires 2 shots that do 2 damage per shot. Uh, very nice to have. Let us go to the store. Let's see. So, message arrives. Your scrap ours are weapons for you. You're about to raise the shields when you realize it's just an NG trader looking for a trade. Breach bomb level 2 ion blast. Ion blast is a nice weapon to have actually. Only 30 scrap, but my current weapons are still enough uh, for a while. Ion blast is quite good. Fires ion damage, uh, uh, disables shields, and best of all, requires only one power. Recharge time is long though for an ion weapon. But first, let's buy up all the fuel I can and repair a good amount of my hull damage. Uh, hmm. I don't think I need to repair too much more. From what I remember of the galaxy map for this, there were a lot of red sectors actually, so. Now that I think about it, I should probably repair some more. We'll repair up 25. And then I could still buy the Ion Blast potentially, but that may not be the best use of my scrap. You know what? Let's, let's upgrade some more systems. Uh, I will upgrade my door system now. Actually, no. Let's upgrade... Yeah, let's upgrade the engine some more. And then next, I think... Depending on what sort of sector I have to go to, I may upgrade the door system here. Upon completing your jump, you receive a message from a nearby ship. Greetings and welcome to our beacon. For a small fee, we'll let you continue on your way. Bandits, huh? Yeah, I'm not going to regret my decision to challenge these fools. They have heavy laser mark 1 and beam weapons, so their ship literally can't hurt mine. I don't even need to target their weapon system to end this. we we'll just... Uh, blow up their uh, shields, then their helm, and that'll be that. It's 
Ah, they brought their shields back online. They must have an NG on board. It's a Mantis scout, so... Usually the Mantis ships will have Mantis plus NG. It's a good combo. Mantis do double damage, but repair at half rate. While well, NG do half damage, but repair at double rate. So they really complement one another well. So, destroy that. You got 3 fuel, 25 scrap, and a drone part. That's pretty good. Let's see... I think I have maybe three more jumps. I could actually potentially explore more beacons too. So we'll go here. Ooh, asteroid field. Pirate ship was lying waiting this asteroid field. Immediately moves to attack. This ship has a ener uh, special energy shield, the Zoltan shield, but Zoltan shields are terrible in asteroid fields. Uh, Zoltan shields absorb any form of damage. Normally, it's an advantage. In an asteroid field, the asteroids would just destroy the shield for me. So, it's uh, terrible luck for them. In fact, by the time uh, my weapons are charged, I could probably take down the ship. No? Okay. Let's actually target their weapons system. Since they could potentially hurt me if I get unlucky. Alright, so now I am completely safe. We'll take out the shield generator and the ship will be rendered completely vulnerable. They offer to surrender. That's a reasonable deal, actually. Two missiles, I mean two field three missiles and 14 scrap, but I'm not desperate for any of them, so I will not accept their offer for surrender. I will try to get some more scrap from the destroyed ship. But 14 scrap isn't a lot. So, after the ship is destroyed, I got 3 fuel, 1 drone part, and 22 scrap. Actually, got more fuel from that. That's a pretty good deal. Let's keep going. Hello, your, communication, uh, your communicator opens a hail from a nearby ship. Our weapon systems are malfunctioning, and we're too afraid of pirates to travel home on the Assistant, can you escort us? Sure. I'll accept. Added a quest marker to my map, so it looks like I am going to be exploring as many uh, beacons as I can. Yeah, so it looks like I can do one, two, three. Or I can do one, two, three. It doesn't really matter which way I do it. Mm, let's go do one, two, three like that. You escort the ship to the requested beacon. Much to your dismay, you are ambushed by a rebel ship. You walk right into a trap. That's okay. This is a very dangerous trap. They have a laser mark one and a laser mark two. I mean, that's a basic laser, rather, and then a burst laser mark two. Basically, they have the same weapons I have. Uh, that burst laser mark two, which is very dangerous. Let's try to sh see if I can shoot down the burst laser, and I did. Good. I don't need to use a missile. Always good to conserve resources early on, if you can. Keep firing. Hmm. Let's take down their shield generator next. It might take them a little while to repair the weapons, and then we will take down their weapons. to uh, eliminate any risk to my ship. Took down all their weapons, actually. Take out the helm next to eliminate any dodge. And if I can do that, they offer to surrender, but this offer is terrible. One missile, one drone, and 15 scrap. I will not accept this offer for sure. And then, as long as they don't repair the helm, I'm guaranteed to kill their ship. Excellent. After destroying this ship, we got 3 fuel, 1 missile, and 21 scrap. Actually, I probably should have done it the other way. Jump there, there, and then to the quest now that I think about it. This is actually the suboptimal way to do this. Whoops! Yeah, because if I jump here, the rebels will almost certainly take over this beacon. That is unfortunate and poor planning on my part. One more power. 
Not sure what I want to upgrade next. Well, let's get out of here. So I could have hit one extra beacon. That is uh, terrible planning. Anyway, upon completing your jump, you receive a message of nearby ship greetings and welcome to our beacon. For a small fee, we will let you go on your way. Yeah, I don't think so. This ship has basic laser mark 2 plus beam weapon. So, or I think that's called a dual laser in this game, so they can actually potentially hurt me. Although not if I take out their weapon systems first. Then we will target down the shields, then the weapons again. To make sure they don't repair it and bring it back online to do any sort of serious damage. And then after this, we will take down the helm to prevent any chance of them evading, and then we'll finish them off by taking out. It doesn't even matter what I target, as long as they don't repair the helm, I am guaranteed to win. So, after doing that, it looks like I've gotten the refuel 1723 scrap. Excellent. And you can see here, this beacon uh, has not been taken over by the rebel, so I could have hit one extra one, but I uh, did not plan carefully hit. I like to upgrade engines a lot, actually. So, well, actually, in the next sector, I might need a door system, though. Uh, let's do that. And then shields or engines. Hmm. Or even potentially weapons, but let's upgrade engines. And then let's get out of here. The door system uh, has many advantages to, to get the level 2 doors. First of all, the blast doors prevent any uh, boarders, and they have a teleporter here, from traveling freely through my ship. They have to defeat the blast doors first. Plus, this prevents, uh, slows down, I should say, the spread of fire. So, it looks like they've teleported over here. It'll take them forever to get through. I may actually, let's depower that and power to the engines. The more power in the engines, the faster travel. I don't really want to fight this ship. I have level 2 shields. It'd just be a pain. And then they have a missile launcher that can do a lot of damage. Let's send the NG to repair this. I might have actually wanted to use one of my missiles on their weapon system. Now that I think about it, but I figure I could jump away pretty soon. Plus, I have 35% evade chance. Ah, didn't evade again. Let's jump out to Rock Control Sector or the Uncharted Nebula. Hmm, that's a hard choice here. Rock Sectors, I think, tend to have more missile weapons. Let's go to the Nebula. Normally, I don't like to go to the Nebula, but. In this case, I'll make an exception. Thanks to the high nebula density of this sector, very little of it has been charted, and rumors of what lurks in the depths abound. Uh, I'm going to put power back to the oxygen, and then heal up both my uh, injured crew members. And let's take a look around. Yeah, this, this just looks like a nebula. And... Brecken here will sit around and repair. And once Jones heals up, he will go back to the engine room. And I will actually have to pause this for now. And I'll be back soon.